Welcome to the show, everybody. Episode 396. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Susie. What are you doing? Oh, uh, you know, just over here <laughs> on the Lauren County episode. You know. Well, I, uh, I wanted to kick off the show talking about something cuckoo bonkers. I love cuckoo bonkers. <laughs> Uh, I got a text message the other day from our brainiac, Christy, who I mm-hmm. enjoy thoroughly. And we share a lot of the same interests um, in terms of entertainment. And she said, have you watched this documentary yet? And it was called Wrinkles the Clown. Are you Oh, familiar? my God. I've heard about. I heard about this and I saw the preview for this. Oh, and, Lord. Oh, but I heard about it months ago. And I've been dying for this to come out. I watched Tell me it on everything. Amazon. I rented it. Um, oh it's on like YouTube as well if you want to rent it. But well, it, so I've noticed that this keeps happening where like I really want to talk about something, but I also want everyone to go see it. And so like yes. I don't want to ruin it. So I'm not going to ruin it. But the essence is that there's this clown in Florida named Wrinkles who's an older, well, presumably older person who... um created a business in which he like parents call him and ask for him and pay for him to terrorize their kids oh my god like if their kids are misbehaving they'll be like well i'm gonna call wrinkles the clown oh my god and he like he will lurk out like outside your window or whatever and part of what you probably saw in the trailer and made wrinkles go viral was this video of it kind of looked like a security camera yes. footage and there was a day bed and a girl sleeping on yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Say and it. um under <laughs> underneath the day bed there's a drawer where the trundle is and you're watching and out pops this hand and oh, then fuck. slowly the drawer opens and out comes Wrinkles the clown and the girl like stirs and you're afraid she's going to wake up and then he like places this stuffed thing next to her and then like puts his hand up to the security camera and then it goes black Mm. and it's the creepiest thing you've ever seen and most troubling thing you've seen and why are parents thinking this is okay this is what what i wanted to talk about that part of the story is how because they played throughout the film they play a lot of voicemails that wrinkles gets from parents and in the background you hear these kids scream screaming and oh crying God. and sometimes they're just screaming and crying because they they're acting out and that's why the parents are calling sometimes they're screaming and crying because they're afraid of wrinkles um oh coming over and so they even interviewed this one dad who's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's child abuse. You know, it's just, it's better than like beating them. What? The, <laughs> the, what a lot of things are better than beating them, but we don't do it. <laughs> right. And then they interviewed this psychologist um, in LA and he was describing the definition of abuse and it absolutely fits into this i mean this is terrorizing your child yes oh my gosh in fact yes i have the dsm diagnostic statistical manual with me i could (laughs) literally pull out of my bag and i'm like let's check out what it says under freaking abuse Absolutely, I would yeah. say it falls into a, a emotional abuse. Totally, one hundred freaking percent. That's disgusting. What's I wrong with people? I understand. You know, sometimes parents feel like they're out of options, or they, they 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 can't think of what they could do to like effectively change their child's behavior. But let me just tell you, this ain't it. No, no, this is not the answer. No, this is so gross. Child psychological abuse. I mean, for goodness sakes. Right. And it fits every single one. Imagine being these kids. Yeah. And Wrinkles is not attractive. Like, (laughs) this is not a clown where you look at him and think, oh, I mean, you know, this guy is, you know, living in a van down by the river. And that for the first 45 minutes, we're shown this Wrinkles person, but like you don't see his face or anything. And he lives in like this camper and, you know, is heating up like hungry man dinners and stuff. Ew. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the clubs. stuff of nightmares. Yes. Oh my God. This is so gross. But like this really is child abuse. 
Yes, I don't know how like, it's Ill- how it's legal. It shouldn't be. And and you know what? Like it's so funny because it's like what parents will do when they're just like desperate for like d- discipline. They they need. Well, first it makes me wonder what did their parents do to them? Where yeah. they make that where this is somehow this better. Is like a step up, you know. But then like I think so. Like my mom, single mom trying to do our best. Our kids are like out of control. Well, I mean, not all of us and not all the time, but you know, we were just kids. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, she got so frustrated. She used to always say like, I, you know, she used to use the cops and she'd be like, I'm, that's it. I'm taking you to the police station. And we would go to the police station and she'd be like, <laughs> tell them that, what, that they're wrong. And like basically used the cops for that. And were so now, you scared? Did you feel terrorized? I have an intense fear of oh my God. cops and like authority fit like because i'm like no no don't take us there don't take like nothing ever happened they were just it would just like be this threat yeah. of like and that was that was not terrifying and that was like people who like you know were supposed to protect and serve so you know question juries in theory that, but yeah in theory <laughs> so you know it's a, it's a whole other topic but um but yeah but it, what it did is it caused me to have this fear of of like being like in trouble with the police. So I, yeah. I can imagine how terrifying, like what the effects of this are, the psychological effects. This one kid who became kind of fixated on wrinkles, he um, said that he had to remove his box spring and his bed frame. Oh, yeah. And had to just put his mattress on the floor because he was convinced that wrinkles was going to be hiding under his bed. And this, is, this kid was like 12. I mean, he yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I was going to say, this isn't going to go away his whole life. <laughs> Forever. Right. I mean, and I so, still like for this this weird fear of like monsters under my bed. I will absolutely admit that there are times when I'm alone where I'll like shut off the lights and then like run and jump in my bed so that the absolutely. monsters like don't grab my legs. I still do that. Wait, because but you think it's a monster, not a human? No, I mean like that's what I was scared of when I was a little kid. I I mean yeah. I don't think it's gonna you know it's no, now I probably I just, am scared it's a human, but you know monsters yeah. like whatever. When you're little, it's a monster. When you're old, a monster. Yeah, because I still human. am like that, but I just think it's like a murderer. You know, right? You know, monster, murderer, <laughs> potato, potato. What's the difference? <laughs> right. So yeah. the, it's really Ugh. scary. Um, and one of the things that was said was about how, you know, what's the big deal? This is essentially what we do with religion and the threat of hell. Oh. And I thought, ooh, now okay. we're cooking with gas. We are. Yes, we are. <laughs> because I remember my very religious and very ugh, incorrect and disturbed uh, other side of the family grandparents. Uh, incorrect. In, yes, about a million things. Uh, said to me when I was six years old, six or seven, that I was going to hell because I was baptized in the wrong church. Oh. <laughs> and we're like very, like... We're like, well, I'm sorry. I pray for your soul. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine so. if that really was what determined who made the cut? Oh, my God. And then my grandparents, who are like are supposed to love me and care for me, are like, we'll be waving at you from heaven. Wish you were here. <laughs> They'll send me. Oh, we'll send you postcards. No. Hope they don't catch up, burn up in flames. Well, these are people who are well-meaning. You know, in theory, this is a well-meaning thing if you really did believe in internal damnation right then you yes. would want to prevent your child from enduring it yeah but oh my um, god but that's different <laughs> is it though Ugh. it's kind of the same really but those parents don't like believe that the con that there's like a consequence like you're like there i don't know Ew, you're well, right. That gets weird. Even if we're not talking about religion, this is what we do with Santa. I was he that was what came to my mind too. And like how every parent is totally using that of like he's watching you. I mean, granted, it's not like Santa's gonna kick your ass, but Right. But he will maybe not give you toys. And yeah, yeah. When yeah. you're a little kid that huh. That but is this is terror. That is No, this is inflicting terror. This yeah. is because that's the thing that it it causes like what is the like it that the examples of psychological abuse of a child include berating, disparaging, humiliating the child, threatening the child, harming, abandoning or indicating that the alleged offender will harm, abandon or people or things the child cares about, confining the child egregious scapegoating, coercing the child to inflict pain on him or herself, disciplining the child excessively, or through physical or non-physical means. Yeah, that pretty much covers that. <laughs> check, check, it check. It really does. I, another thing I found interesting was after 
the video of the security camera thing went viral. Um, you know, wrinkle, this is how Wrinkles makes his living. So his phone number is available. So then it became this weird mythology and urban legend type thing where then people, kids, teenagers and stuff would call the number to see if Wrinkles would answer Yeah, one of those deals. And um, so it was fascinating to see how the tables turned and then he was the one being terrorized oh. by all these teenagers and stuff well, you know constantly what? calling him. That's what you get. That's, that's what you get. Yeah. Right. But I, like, I want people to watch the damn thing so we can talk about it because there's a big twist man. in it. After. Oh, I love a twist. Yeah, I have been waiting for this documentary to come out for a long time. You got to watch. You'll be into it. Yes. And that just reminds me of that picture of you as a kid <laughs> with, with that clown, fucked up clown who absolutely, I mean, like, yeah. that, I, that, that, ew. I like have a, this is going to be gross. Trigger warning. I have this, vi- ugh, this like visual <laughs> in my head of him on this disgusting, like, like recliner chair in like a trailer, w- like, like <laughs> taking care of business with his suit, clown suit still on. So I'm like <laughs> Taking gross, care of business. Yeah. Like. Oh, criminy. Nasty. <laughs> Try to make that sound as not gross as it is in my head out loud. I'll tell you what but isn't gross is what? when you have a bra that fits properly. Oh my god, I got a new set, Suze, <gasps> and I invest Oh, I got matchy matchy. It's tell so me what freaking you bought. cute. I got the lace. There's like a lace Oh, what is it called? It's beautiful. It's like lace uh uh bra, and then I got the matching um undies for it, and it's like this beautiful gray color. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think I, I got I, something I got the, similar, but I got mine in, like, it's kind of like an eggplant or, like, a purplish. Oh, beautiful. Really But pretty. I got the thumbs up from Ren for sure. They're so and, nice. And he even asked, he's like, is that comfortable? And I was like, yes. You so comfortable. <laughs> Thanks for asking, because isn't it beautiful and gorgeous? It's so great. They have 80, over 80 bra sizes. They definitely have one that fits you. They even have half sizes. And they do the perfect fit promise. So you have 60 days to wash it and wear it. If you don't love it, you can return it for free. No problemo. And they donate all their gently used bras to women in need. So everybody's happy. Um, You take a little fit finder quiz to find out what your actual size is because you're probably wearing the wrong one. They're comfortable. They're high quality. They're tagless. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash brain now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's the thirdlove.com slash brain for 15% off today. Yes. I'll oh never God, wear another so brand ever. Me ever. either. They're so, it's so beautiful. I love it. <sighs> um, yes. Yeah. Watch the wrinkles, the clown thing. Mm. And so we can talk about it. I can't wait. And you've just given me so many good documentaries in the like, <laughs> I recent. Know, I've been on a roll. Yeah, you really have. So, uh, oh, so okay. Good. So next on my list, um, I was thinking about it because last time on the last episode, you were talking about food and food waste and stuff like that. Yes. And you reminded me of this article that I read in the New York Times. And it was talking about, you know, how you often hear people criticizing low income people when they are also overweight mm-hmm. sort of being mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. how how much of a problem could you have if you're eating enough right. to be overweight that kind oh, of thing god but that's so backwards yeah it's so backwards for a million reasons but this article was about the hidden cost of giving kids their vegetables so it was talking in particular about parenting so like if you are a person that's on government assistance and you have mm-hmm. or or even like a fixed income you have a certain amount of money you can spend each month on food. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of vegetables especially, it takes a long time and many, many meals before kids will tolerate it. And so they end up wasting it for a very long time before they'll end up, you know, relenting and then developing a, a taste for it. And people with low income or that are on government assistance, oh. they can't afford to waste food to right. develop this kid's palate, palate. right? Totally. And so they end up just buying what they know their kid will eat. And I totally get it. Yep. Absolutely. You know? That totally makes sense. It just gave me more of an understanding about 
like the the mindset that you have to have about like, okay, I have this much money, I have to make this many meals. What are you going to do? Are you going to buy the crap they're going to throw in the garbage? Probably well, not. And let's even take it one step further of like time and like what, when you, that whole process of teaching a child to like, no, yeah. this is what you're, this is what we have. This is what you're going to eat. Like yeah. is great if you have all the time in the world to like, like what's the schedule look like? What are we trying to get done in a day? When are these meals taking place? Is mom like rushing from, you know, one job to the next? Is it like, no, you got to eat right now because like whatever, who knows? You know, I just feel like it's a very, like, like the kids who just have to sit there at the table for two hours and stare at their Brussels sprouts and all that stuff is like nice if, you know, there's nothing else going on. But Yeah, and it's a privilege that people without money struggles wouldn't think about like right you have them take a bite and then after like 15 of those meals where they took one bite then maybe they will be okay with it right right Mm. like you're fine with the waste because you're developed you have a thing going on like okay there's a bigger goal at the end yeah but like you you can't do that if you got no money right absolutely and then you see that waste and it's like no i can't be getting things i have to get the get the thing that's my kid, I know my kids are going to eat, that they're yeah. going to eat, you know, right then. And, you know, then, like, it can't turn into a whole, yes, like, additional stressor. Basically, it becomes an additional stressor. And yeah. can you put, a, like, for lack of a better term, like, more on this, whoever the parent is, their plate? Well, I told you, I told you my mom's motto with child rearing is, he'll live. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> it all's That's fine. So, oh, ah. gosh. Because yeah. the stress, as you're pointing out, the stress can be paralyzing in a way. Yeah, yeah. Because you're never going to do it all right. Right. But I thought that was interesting. And remember a long, long time ago <sighs> on the show, yeah. we talked about how at some farmer's markets, your um, – what's the actual oh, name yes, for yes, yes. government assistance? Um, e- Food stamps uh, or – Yeah, but there's like another name for it. This like is a such, proper look name. Of, yes. Like look at how we don't know what this is. That E E – EBT? E- oh, yeah, that rings a bell. But yes. my family ha- had WIC, which is um, yeah. similar. and But whatever they give you now, because I think they keep changing it, and that's part of why we don't know the name, but you get double the value at some farmer's market. That's markets, so great. Which I hope that's true, because that's really cool. Yeah, but then, of course... They have, they have to live in a place where there's a farmer's market. Well, that's true. And yeah. so we know that there are food deserts where that's not even a possibility. Yeah. You know? It's a bummer. Everything's it's- set up to screw the little guy. Oh, my gosh. And people like, yeah. I, we got the results of our poll back, and almost 80% prefer when we're silly, so I'm really screwing this up today. <laughs> <laughs> and I, last episode, I was all serious about saving the planet and animals and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Tomatoes scream, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> But I do. I just think that's it's helpful to be reminded of what people are experiencing who may not be in the exact same situation you are. And I yeah. don't know. No, it's a good one. It's important to think about. Then and it's like so backwards. We have to like change that like what is it, implicit bias or like that those like that that thought you know of like mm-hmm. yeah because it's a big difference between the quality of and quantity all that stuff. So. I was also reading about how, have you ever thought about how the heck they determine how many calories are in a piece of food? Uh, it, I, I feel like I know it has something to do with like a, a calorie is like how much, what ha- determined by the energy that the food yeah. has to turn into something. And there's something about like heat. I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I but, get that. But like if you're looking at a bagel... How the hell right. do they know? Yeah, no well, joke, and I'm sure it's all wrong. <laughs> right, that's the, what this article is about. It was that I was talking about how that science is imprecise and very oh. difficult to ascertain the answers. And so, like recently, they had to change the number of calories that a handful of almonds is. Uh huh. It's lower than they thought, which is hey, that's great. Thank goodness, because I was just having this conversation with somebody about how almonds like. You know, in in certain like food apps are like deceivingly like high, and it's like no, no, but they're like good, and right. I don't know. You know, it's yes. like that, that one always throws things off for some reason. Yeah, the almonds are always like one nut is five hundred calories. Right? They're like, it's but it's so good true. fat. 
Right. That's but, so funny. This seems like a conversation that is popping up all over the place. Well, because so, I guess on some of the... It. I think it was those kind bars. Yes, they yes, yes, They had yes. changed their calories even though the ingredients stayed the same and they said it was in response to these new studies that showed that nuts had fewer calories than they had suspected earlier um and it was kind of i mean we're we're poop enthusiasts over here so this yes. is in keeping with our brand we but sure are they had 2000 people <laughs> poop and pee and then put it in dry ice all of it, not just like a little sample, like all their wow. BM. Wow. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> bring it in. And then they had them eat nuts all the damn day. And then mm-hmm. they analyzed their poop and checked how much was in there. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. This makes so much sense. Right. Dude. <laughs> it's so great. This is, uh, I mean, it's like. <laughs> Sarah. It's gross, but this is important. It's cool research it's and gross. really interesting, yeah. and totally makes sense. Yes, I love it. So the majority of the nut isn't digested, therefore not giving us every single bit of like caloric. Well, and here's another thing. Basically, wow. and and this stands to reason, but I never thought of it this way: that if the nuts are cooked then it's more calories because something about the cooking process causes those to become absorbable in a different way. And then when they're ground up, they are almost completely um, digestible. So there's even more calories when they're ground up. Who knew? Yeah. Like pe- Who like almond butter knew? or peanut butter would Correct. have. Yeah. That's so really go. smart. <laughs> it Interesting. is. And it's sort of like. I don't well, know. I think that... a lot of people get frustrated counting calories because yes, it's they do. overwhelming. Yeah. And then to think that it's also inaccurate would probably really upset oh, me. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. But I think a lot of those counting calories programs and things like that are good to just help people get in the habit of what a portion size looks like, you know, things yeah. like that. So yeah. then you can take that. And once you've, like, developed those habits, then you can kind of, like, you know, change up the food that maybe you're eating with it and stuff like that. But those similar habits kind of stay fixed. Of yeah. Like a smaller portion size and whatever it is. But, you know, yeah, if it's a difference, like if you're, you know, it can't be that big of a swing. We're not talking the difference of like hundreds of calories, right? No, but it's, you know. Yeah. It, but I enough suppose, over time. Yeah, like over a week you might have consumed yeah. more, like a thousand more or less, more or fewer calories than you had thought. Yes. But whatever. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and, like, it ta- <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> I love it. And you know what? Like <laughs> I now wonder, like, I th- okay, I, I'm going here because this is what we do on the podcast yes. when we talk about poo. <laughs> like, are we not absorbing as much fiber from corn as we think then? That's what I, I thought the same thing. I was like, now I want to know about everything else that right. comes is out in the other calorie direction. Free? Is like, are you right. I'm like, bring on the popcorn. Give me everything. <laughs> like, if, if it's just... You know, you know what? Yes, what? I think you're right. That makes total I, sense. It would, right? Kind of yeah. into it. I've been <laughs> making a lot of ho- homemade popcorn. Recently. So have we? Lincoln's I, on a real roll with that. So is Ren because he had never seen popcorn made at home before. And when he did, it was like showing what I assume it would be like showing Lincoln. He was like, "Oh my gosh, this yeah. is so cool!" And we like wait right. for the first kernel to pop, and it's yes. like super fun. It's so fun. We're like I kids. Yeah. I really don't know why people buy the bag kind. You can just you pop it real there's easy like, at home. Yeah, and I hear there's a whole bunch of chemicals in there. Oh, my God. Okay, in well. In fact, yes. you know how they say like the, the uh, vape smoking and gives people mm-hmm. what they call popcorn lung, which is like, <gasps> and it's from inhaling a chemical that is, the, and they call it that because it's the same chemical that is used in popcorn, like at the factories where microwavable popcorn is made, and the factory workers there from inhaling those chemicals develop that. What? Yes. So that's where, well, at least an article I read about the harms of that. Oh, we're all doomed. Yeah, pretty much. So like well, poison, I guess. that's terrible news. What's good news is that you can know what the heck is going on with your body thanks to modern fertility. Yes. This is a service I love. You guys need to do this. I cannot recommend it enough because I I just can't believe that they were able to create the technology that you can take this little test, send it. I feel like there's an earthquake going on. Just mark my words. Really? If there was, just, you know, if there is oh a God. one, yes. Susie knew it. 
Um, oh. <laughs> or I'm just like, I got the shakes. Um, well, maybe Modern Fertility could check on that for me because yes, you right. take a little test, you send it off, and then they send you your results. They're like, here's how fertile you are. Here's what's going on with your eggs. Here, if you have PCOS or whatever, they can tell you that and notify you. So if you're thinking about getting pregnant or not, this is a great way to know what the heck is going on with your hormone levels and reproductive uh, issues you may be having. Yes. And it's so affordable. Traditionally, this is something that would have cost over a thousand bucks at like your doctor's office, but they'll do it for $159 for the same information. Come on. Yes. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy. So that means your test will only cost $139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it would cost mm. you at the doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash brain candy, modernfertility.com slash brain candy. Yes. It was so love easy it. to do. You will love it. Yeah. And apparently I still have, there's still hope for me. I love that. Yeah. I you know. I, I think you should just like still try. What is? I know. Adam said that. Oh my God. Yes. He was like, we should, we should have another baby. I'm like, do you mean like <gasps> make a baby or adopt a baby? And he was like, either. Oh so, my God. That's who knows? The maybe. I'll see what happens with you and then I'll like copy you. Oh, I love that. It's, it's probably contagious. I hear that. <laughs> it's contagious. Uh, okay. Moving on. Um, what do I want to talk about? People, oh, this you'll love. People who quit Facebook were, duh, happier. Well, duh. And this was the number that I Is it that like I the not to... interacting with relatives thing or what's going on there? I mean, I think there's a lot of comparisons that people make. Oh, for sure. They, some people call it fake book because everyone's phony baloney and pretends their totally. life is great. Totally. Although I will say I totally enjoy when there's like the oversharer who like reveals all the terrible things about their life. And they're usually not self-aware. They don't even know they're doing it. And it do cracks you, do, me does up. Does somebody come up, pop in your head of like people? Lots who, of people. I, man, maybe it's because I'm not on there that I don't really see it. I just go on there every now and then. Sometimes to go through the brain candy crush like yeah. You know. Facebook. Yeah, see what everybody's got cooking. Yeah. And I believe me, I'm not on Facebook a, apart from Brain Candy either, but those overshares were the highlight of my life when I was on it all the time because <laughs> they would just like air their dirty laundry like if they were yes. having a fight with their spouse or whatever. Right. Um, but I, I, maybe, oh, yeah. This it's said like, though, go ahead. No, I'm just like, I wonder like if it makes those people who are not self-aware feel better and then the people who are self-aware just like f- feel worse. Maybe. I, I do know that people, like, it drains your soul. It's not uplifting. It doesn't make you feel like you're a part of the magic of the world. It feels like the worst part of the world to me. Yeah, to me too. Yeah. But people have trouble quitting it for some reason. I mean, it. it, it I do think it's all about balance, though, because I know that there are people who have, like, you know, gotten a lot of, you know, help from you know, those supportive Facebook groups. It's really just the pages and the posting and comparing. And I don't know. I think you just have to have balance. I mean, I d- be able I to have step heard out that, of that world. Groups, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, people love them. And I do love our Brain Candy group. Um, and they are generally really lovely and supportive of each other, which I find heartening. Yeah. But there can be pylons there too, though, you know. Absolutely. And you know what I, I was thinking too is like, could is a an internet group is never a substitution for like a real Mm-mm. meeting of of humans and i think when we try to do that there are like yes there are good that come from those things but it, it it's not better than or a substitution for oh my god listen to this i read this yes, and i yes. it is a total downer and we are not being silly and i promise i will improve <laughs> but <laughs> this was in the new york times this lady this dumbass mom who her whole family came down with a really severe flu virus and um, she had gone to the doctor and they gave her a prescription and she went on one of those GD anti-vax groups and told them and they were like, don't give them the medicine, like take fucking lavender or whatever the hell, essential oil. And that kid passed away. I hate it. It's terrible. I really do. And in fact, there was somebody, like one of our listeners who did contact me and was like, I don't think you know everything about like like 
check out this this article. And she said check out this article, but then it just linked me to like a Facebook group. Oh no! And I was like, this isn't an article. None of this is 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 actual factual material that can be backed up. And if if people think it is, you're incorrect. Oh. It's really scary, and it's not. People don't know the truth, and like, and especially that was an a. a I did research on that exact article that came out about vaccines and like that study and everything and how bullshit it is and how it was debunked and he was thrown out of like, you know, medical license stripped and blah, 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 blah. And it's like people just don't know and it's really dangerous. Like misinformation is so dangerous. Well, and then last time we talked about the anti-vax thing, somebody, somebody, did you know about this? No. Somebody in our brain candy crush who... I don't know if she considers herself anti-vax, but she hasn't had her kid vaccinated, and she was talking about it in our group, and um, our group doesn't handle that very well. Right. And so she got booted from the group, and then she messaged me, and I felt really bad because I don't want anyone to get, like, excommunicated. Right. But um, I did say maybe you could come on the show sometime because mm. not that I, I don't want to amplify that point of view, so that's why I'm torn about it. But I did love episode five when we interviewed right. the non-feminist woman because right. that was really interesting and weird. Yes. But what do you think? Would this serve the purpose no, of amplifying? Yes, I think oh, okay. so because I think it would be – no, no, not amplifying. I think it would be a good idea to have somebody on because I'm curious to know where like the source is and, okay. and like why why there's a confidence in – certain information and a disbelief mm. in others because like you know the more uh, in, involved I get like in specific research and learn about people who are like and even in wanting to do my own like people who go into researching a specific field usually have a personal story about it like yeah, you know there was true. something we talked about a long time ago about how like um people who are, are part of like the like weather team you know and like meteorologists and how like they they all have a story about why they became that because they like survived some storm or their family went blah, 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 you know? And so like, I think somebody who's doing research on vaccines and you know, they're linked, like they care about that. So why do you think like, why a lot of these people think like, Oh, it's like the medical community trying to like, you know, hide information from us. And I really loved um, Joel Stein's book in defense of elitism because he, does such a good job of describing that phenomenon where um, certain groups have grown very distrustful of Mm -hmm. the medical community, authorities in general, um, Mm -hmm. scholars, uh, education, for a variety of reasons. And he helps to unpack what's at the core. And some of them I really do understand. Like I really Mm -hmm. understand the African-American community's mistrust and and of – the medical community or distrust in the medical community because they absolutely were screwed, screwed and victims of that a hundred percent. Yeah. But like, I look at like a middle to upper class mom, you know, like with, and this is just, you choose it like to follow, you know, what's her name? Who's kind of started this whole thing. Jenny McCarthy or, Mm. you know, like, it I just do, seems I, different than I said this on the that. last time that we talked about it, and I still believe it. These are people who really want what's best for their kids. And this that's is true. what yes. oh, I have to always remind myself that talk about good intentions. I mean, they yeah. really believe that this could save their child's life. So I understand why it happens. But I just know, I, I really just know that the people who are like, you know, devoting their life to researching, you know, the, the, like developing new vaccines and and making sure people are vaccinated, like care about this, you know, like these are like, I don't know, like people like me who are like care and want to things to not be bad. So they're devoting their life to researching it, not devoting their life to, you know, manipulating the population and whatever. Like, I don't know. I feel like that maybe exists some places, but I feel like most people who are in research in the medical world really care yeah like you know developing cures for cancer because their family they had a family member died of that or something i've talked to our pediatrician about the vaccine thing and he was talking about how 
he actually barely breaks even and sometimes loses money on vaccines because they're not like a big money maker. In right. fact, if you get sick, if you're not vaccinated and get sick, he would make way more money off of treating Correct. you. Right. Um, oh. So I, I get it, but it's like, you know, it's a sad thing. Maybe we'll have her on the on the show um, yeah, to talk about just, it. We'll see. It's but interesting. Technology yeah. that I do love is Hubble, their contacts, and this the system they have set up to get you the contacts that you need right to your door without the huge markup. I know this is a big thing for people. I encur- I got my nephew, Grant, to sign up for Hubble because... Oh, right. I remember he, this. Yeah. He always um, would complain about how costly it is to wear contacts. And so I got him hooked up with Hubble, and he is loving it because it's super easy. You just put your... Um, prescription in online, um, you know, go to your, go get your test, get your info, right. and then you put it in there and uh, it'll deliver it right to your door. So it's easy to sign up. There's no stress or hassle to start the subscription. Um, and they're so affordable. So, you know, contacts are expensive because there are like four companies that control 95% of the market. So they were, they came in and disrupted all of that. If you want daily contacts at a price you can afford, visit hubblecontacts.com. You'll get two weeks of daily lenses shipped straight to your door for just $1. That's 30 wow. contacts for just $1. What are you waiting for? Make 2020 the year you start seeing 2020 and stop overpaying for contacts. Start seeing the savings when you sign up at hubblecontacts.com. That's hubblecontacts.com. And don't forget to select our show in the post-checkout survey. Guys, that would help us so much if you did that. Yeah, man. Any hoodles. So that was the, another downer. I'm really on a roll today. Oh, I had yeah. told you last week, I think it was, about how I wanted to talk to you about the story of the Aerosmith drummer, and I never got around to it. Oh, so now's yeah, the yeah, time. yeah. So apparently for the Grammys, Aerosmith was performing, or maybe they were being honored, like a lifetime achievement type of mm-hmm. dealie. Mm-hmm. And for a while, the drummer had been out. I think he had surgery. And then when he was ready to come back, they made him audition. Oh, my God. That's Okay, funny. so that's the first thing. and that, So let's start there. Like, I want to know who – is it Steven Tyler? Like, who's like <laughs> – I don't know, like, who's the brain I need to the, see him audition. Of- I forgot how well he plays. So – and I also don't know what the surgery was. So maybe it was something that could affect drumming. Yeah, if it's rotator cuff, maybe you would want to <laughs> see, like, if it's his wrist – Let's see. Let's see a little bit of that bum, 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 bum action. Yeah. So maybe that's why. Because at first blush, I was like, "Well, that's rude." But then I thought, "Okay, well, maybe it had to do with what the surgery was, and so they needed to know that he could, in fact, perform." But didn't that didn't Van Halen keep a drummer, and he only had one? He lost an arm. <laughs> it was not Van Halen. It what was is Def it? Leppard. Def Leppard. But that's hilarious. Def Leppard. I mean, come on. Like, save you. This is like the music genre I know the least about next to country. No, I'm well, impressed. I'm impressed okay. that you even know that, but it's still okay. funny. I just remember a joke that a long time ago I heard, like, what band has eight arms and, or like, or oh some like nine arms and sucks? Or what has nine <laughs> arms and sucks? And you want to say, like, an octopus? And you're like, no, Def Leppard or something like that. That's terrible, Sarah. I didn't write that joke. <laughs> Okay. It's not me. So, okay, anyways, back to Aerosmith drumming. Okay, so they made him audition, and then they were like, no, you're not good enough. Oh, my gosh. So then they wouldn't let him perform at the Grammys, so he <gasps> sued them. And they were like, listen, we love this guy, and he's welcome to walk the red carpet with us and like oh be a part of the band, but like he's just not good enough for the performance. What do you um- think of this? It must have been something. I, I mean, oh, in a way that's maybe fair. If he, mm-hmm. if he wasn't, if he was like injured and had surgery and he didn't perform at, at it just seems like he would know if yeah. he couldn't do it. Mm. Like if he yeah, were, but, you know. And then I also think I'm like Steven Tyler sounds different. His voice is aged, so like yeah. they're not kicking him out because he does. He, he's like doesn't sound as good as he did when he was younger. Right. Hmm. Yeah, what's the bar here? What are we comparing it to? Your peak moment? And, or just right. like good enough? I want to know now. And I'm like, <laughs> how much did he suck? But the judge found in favor of Aerosmith, not the drummer. So he was oh. he was shut out. He must have really sucked. What if they all they did in there <laughs> was must- they just played the, the recording of it? 
They're just like, here you go, click. Yeah, and the and judge was like, like <laughs> it's case case closed, dismissed. Right. Right. Oh, I that's mean, so funny. That's the opposite of sweet emotions, yes. apparently. You know, a uh, little fun <laughs> fact: my mom. Sally, shout out to Sally, did the wardrobe in Aerosmith's music video, Love in an Elevator. Wow. Yes. Get out of here. She says Steven Tyler's the worst. <laughs> Why? She just doesn't like him. What, what did he do, though? Uh, I don't know. I think she, she just said he was rude. We'll have to ask her. We should have oh, her on we here. Should. We should just cold call Sally. I swear. I have been thinking about that because I did an She'll interview. She'll give you gold every time. <laughs> yeah, it's never a disappointment. And I interviewed Link the other day, and I'm going to put it up on Patreon because... Oh, my God. How fun. It's adorable, Sarah. I oh, mean, well, I'm we biased, have to interview Sally on Patreon. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I oh, want to talk guaranteed. to Peg. Oh, Sally. everybody. <laughs> and anybody who gets, like, a shout-out on here uh, on the regs, we because should do that. Because it would be that. hilarious. And you know, oh, my God, my mom will just, like... We won't get two words in. <laughs> I'm a, I, I don't know if I want this because maybe I'll get fired and you'll have a new co-host. No, you know what? She's been on before and it was great and I think she can handle it. Oh, so. yeah. She can definitely yeah, handle Yeah, we'll it. have to call her and get the scoop on why Steven Tyler is the worst. I did not see that coming in yes. this episode. We, could, we can also have her, maybe, maybe she has some info on whether you will get pregnant again. Oh, okay. She's well, what did she say about that. you? Uh... She says that my grandma has come to her and said Easter, Easter, Easter. So I don't know if it's Easter, when this Easter is going to be. But she says there's some baby things happening around Easter. That's fun. So we'll see. Maybe Easter next year, the year after. Who knows? Yeah. He is risen. Maybe you're going to give birth to the Lord, the the, the third coming. You know what? I have said, Ren, I have said uh, uh, the very least we're looking at a senator here between our (laughs) genetics. Senator. Very least. President, probably. But minimum, we're getting a senator. Oh, my God. I, what was I watching last night? Oh, the Oscars. And the guy said, you know, my wife quit her job so that, you know, I could have this career. He was thanking her. It was lovely. And he was like, she raised our children, and neither of them became politicians, so we did Right, okay. I saw that. That was yeah. so funny. So uh, when you say senator, now I'm like, wait, is that good or bad? It, it's uh, good because we're like, we'll, they'll be like... Fighting for the right things. I mean, come on. With both of us as parents, hello. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. By the and way. Then, yes. Go. Continue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, no. This was like an aside. But then I, like Ren's 23 and me results said that he does have the body composition of an elite athlete. And mine what? said that I do not. So I'm really hoping <laughs> that those elite athlete genes pull through and, uh, you know, we've got like What are the criteria athletic. for that? They just look at like your, your muscle tone. Like... It just says that you have a body comp. It'll say either you have a body composition similar to elite athletes or you do not have a body Damn composition. It. And I was like, oh, mine says that I'm cheering from the crowd. Oh, that's Sit all right. on the bench. But that's hey, a- I did pretty well for somebody who has a body that's not that of an elite athlete. I think I did pretty well that's on those challenges. That's going to be like on my tombstone is like, you did pretty well with what you had. That's exactly how I felt. I was like, <laughs> hey, pretty good. <laughs> considering i'm fighting an uphill battle over here <laughs> right we're not born i'm not for this. built for this literally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not built for this so you know i'm i'm just like hoping that those are recessive traits <laughs> yeah i i think that's wrong though anyway i think that's incorrect because yeah. you're very athletic Thanks. i don't know what they're talking about think i mean did they take into consideration uh what did i always say i feel like i would be good at downhill uh uh bobsledding did Loosh? they did they put did they put luge in there i bet they did not mm-hmm. look at the body composition of those gals Mine and remember how perfect. you won that thing where you had to hold your breath yeah like that to me seems like lance Armstrong type of lung well, magic. Thanks, yeah. It's probably just from smoking weed, but you know. <laughs> that does not improve your lung capacity. I think it does. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Years <laughs> of, maybe it doesn't. It probably doesn't. Just strengthen my lungs over time. No, I'm totally kidding. That's not what happened. It's because I swam when I was little. Oh, okay. It's because I was a swimmer forever. Well, and they're not taking into account in that whatever science that you're so stubborn. Because remember, you they you 
put that brick on you or whatever. And they were like, yes. you're taking on water. You yeah. have to go up. They're forever. like, you're good. You're close to drowning. <laughs> you are, you're going to develop pneumonia for taking in this freezing cold water. Please get up. Because to me, were that's so that. much of what athleticism is, is just grit. Oh, Zeus, you're yeah. so nice. Not- this, I, thank you. <laughs> well, because I know I don't have it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm done. <sighs> Well, now we're looking at all-star athlete and a senator. Man, I mean, you're incredible. Definitely full ride scholarship there. Uh, I should add, by the way, I forgot to say when we were talking about Facebook that the benefits of quitting were about twenty-five to forty percent of the benefit you get from psychotherapy. Wow! So that's pretty awesome. So if you did psychotherapy and quit Facebook, you'd be looking pretty good. Really? And I bet you they there is a strong overlap there. Because you learn, right. like, the behaviors that are contributing to your pain. Oh, that's really good. Do your I love patients, I, I don't know what you can say or not, but do your clients ever talk about Facebook? Does it come up uh, a lot? No, I, I have not had, I think more than anything, um, you know, and this has been just a kind of like a general feel yeah. that I get, especially from working in Orange County, that there's societal pressures that are really felt and that those can be, like exacerbated or even like amplified by social Mm -hmm. media and it's for men and women yes it's different and but it really is a thing and it's about like the way you look and how successful you are stuff like that yeah Er. and and um uh expectations versus reality and kind of like comparing yourselves to others and just almost like this, this, everybody has to be like camera ready all the time. And that's not reality. Yeah. It sucks. You know? All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad we established all that. Um, yeah. <laughs> that our lives you've are heard, terrible. You've heard it here, folks. <laughs> Everything's terrible. And there's nothing we can do about it. The end. Yes. Oh um, my God. I did read a great article in Atlantic by, um, our friend Derek Thompson, who wrote, I think, the hit makers and yeah, yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. a great oh i love that book he's so cool and he wrote an article about the history of the bathroom in american homes it was so interesting because you know Wait, how some- i think i read this did you about how there are more in america yeah. than everywhere yes yes oh this is fantastic did Keep you going. think it was interesting totally interesting yeah, and at first yeah. when i read it i was like how much can there be about this and then when i clicked and i was like whoa Yes. This is a whole bunch on this. I get really excited when something totally pedestrian can be represent something bigger in culture. And that's yes. what this was. It was like it wasn't about bathrooms really. It was about how our lives have changed and then they're a reflection of that. Yeah, so tell me some of the highlights. Well, so it was saying how we just we used to not have very many bathrooms in our homes and now we have like a gazillion mm-hmm. and it was just develop talking about like how uh early on there was sort of like the toilet room and which i, I forget the name of that it, i think it had some sort of name and then like the washroom where you would do your bath right. and all, all that yes. stuff and then there was a change to the three fixture bathroom and that was just due to like keeping the water pipes all in one place because people thought it was disgusting and that that's where germs were coming through the pipes. They thought like that's why everyone was getting sick was from just indoor plumbing. And so instead of getting rid of it, they were like, well, well, let's just put it all in one room. And then... interesting. When um, really that's even (laughs) more like... I mean, really, if you think about it, it's pretty gross. Yeah, because there was like that whole Mythbusters about how when you flush the toilet, it like... Poo particles go everywhere if the toilet seat's not closed. And if your toothbrush is in the same room, there's definitely poo particles on your toothbrush. Yeah. And like, I don't, that doesn't bother me, but some, my mother-in-law is really hung up on that. So she will not even flush the toilet until the lid is down. Yeah. I'm kind of into that too. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I just, I couldn't be bothered. Whatever. I know that's totally true also, but I'm like, <laughs> ugh, I it suppose, if, you know, we make the guys put the toilet seat down every time. I suppose I could close it. And it was just talking about how like... It was basically seen as a cesspool, as I said, where germs went to live. And then now it's developed into what he called a human car wash. And that oh. that it's become, you know, this place of pampering, really. Yes. 
And that he said in the world of constant connection, the biggest luxury is now (gasps) seclusion. And like it's being so alone. True. And I definitely know this is true as a mother. That is my favorite place. Oh my gosh, that is so true. Oh, my mom used to read us this book. It's so cute when we were little. It was called Five Minutes Peace, and it was about an elephant family. And the mom elephant it just wants to take a bath. And she oh. goes in the bathroom and shuts the door and like puts the bath together. And in walks a little baby elephant who's like, Can I show you this thing that I just made? And the mom's like, Ugh, five minutes, just give me five minutes peace. Yes. And like pushes him out. And every single time that little another baby elephant comes in and is like, I, I did this. Can I show you that? I just learned this song on the kazoo. Can I show you? And she's like, I just need five minutes peace and yeah. then at the end she finally gets her five minutes peace and then she like looks around she's like mm, i miss them and she opens the door Aww. and they're all like piled outside and so then they all get in the bathtub with her and she's like i guess you know like Ugh, whatever yeah you, know? you, but, you have to surrender because you're probably yes. not going to get the peace and it's but. just the cutest book and uh uh but she would always it's like that's what my mom would say when she goes in the bathroom she's like i'm going to get my five minutes peace and we all knew what that <laughs> yes. meant because she like primed us with this book of like yeah, don't go leave in there me alone <laughs> yep and that the bathroom is the sanctuary and you're very good about not taking your phone in the bathroom because you say it's gross right it's super gross i don't yeah. like it i'll never use my phone in the toilet Blech, nasty <laughs> so you're just sitting there making bms all by yourself without your I'm, phone i'm pretty i'm pretty speedy but you know what it's funny as i do is i print a lot of articles for the uh oh podcast and i read them in printed form with on pieces of paper on the toilet. then i just toss them when i'm done not wow. just because of the bathroom but like you know i just like because I don't want my phone in there. I don't know. It's just weird. So a lot of your brain candy prep is done over BM. The reading. Well, yeah. And I like, or I, or I have them all together. I like staple them and I like read them while I'm in the bathtub. That's like, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just kind of like the, the stack and like, you know. But I used to have a trivia book that I had in the bathroom for a long time that Allie gave me. Shout out to Allie. Yeah, so I like learn things. I do like it. enjoy. I do enjoy the the throne for that. I do not like, as you know, the new development in bathroom trends where they've eliminated the tub. Uh, you can imagine oh, my dismay. <laughs> worst. And then when you and go to then, a hotel, and they're Sarah, like, "Here's a shower." You gave me that tip of saying I, I wanted a handicap room. Guess yep. what? What? Now they do handicap accessible showers. No. Yes, and you can just wheel on in there. Nope. I just used this trick recently and got myself a little. Well, I'm sure it works some places. Too. Yes, but the ones that are like newly renovated or whatever. Dang, th- they're what? on to it, us. Yeah, because I had called the, called the hotel and been like, you know, do you think we can move t- to a, or, you know, f- like while I f- was just checking in, I got to the room, I saw there was no bathtub, and I was like, oh, let me call down and see if they can upgrade us to one with a, a bathtub. And they're like, yeah, that'll be an extra hundred dollars a night. And I was like, ugh, no. So then, like, some hotels now have this like thing where they they'll text you when you check in, like, if you need anything from the hotel or like if we can help you in any way, let us know. And so I just text them, like, you know, I, we didn't say this upon checking in, but you know, we're gonna we would love a, uh, to move to a uh, you know like handicap accessible room and. They were like, yeah, sure, no problem. And they moved us to that room. However, it was the same room with just a regular tub, not the fancy schmancy <sighs> two-person luxury right. spa tub experience. Of tub of uh. No, nah, it was not that. And I was like, mm. well, oh, well, I got my bathtub. but All right. You know. I mean, take what you can get. but Yes. And every floor has them, so don't think I'm, like, taking it away from some – like, I even said that to him. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Should yeah, I you're feel gonna guilty get about how I'm, like, taking this away from – and he's like, no, you waited till it was the evening, till after work, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay. I was – I just didn't want to, like – Wait, you know. let me ask you, since we're on the subject, your opinion. Yes. With regards to handicapped bathroom stalls. Yes. Are they exclusively for handicapped or anyone can use them, but they are, you know – Specially designed to accommodate handicapped people. Oh, I mean, if the if the it depends on which ones are open. I will go to the the uh, open one. You know, it's interesting. Like, I'll never ever ever park in a handicapped parking space, and I yeah. think people who do are like it's like so rude. To well, think and it's that, illegal. Like, oh, the, of course. Yeah, and to think that you could just like pull up in front and be like, oh, I'm just going to run in for two seconds, and nobody's going to get you know, even if the whole parking lot is empty, I don't care. You don't do that. But I, for, I feel like with, with stalls, if, um, if, it, if there's like a line and that is uh, available, then I'll go in there. But if there are other stalls open, 
then I'll use the other stalls before I would use the handicap space. Okay. The stall, wheelchair accessible stall. Right. Yes. How about you? Well, I guess that's my position as well, but I always feel like, am I supposed to not go in there at all under any circumstances? But that's also often where they put the uh, changing table, like the baby. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, what is the... Well, and if he's with me, then I got to go in there because yeah, there's like double trouble going on, but... Totally. I so, just wondered, you know, like, is this considered ba- gauche? Where maybe, it, maybe we should ask somebody who is yeah. a differently abled. Yeah, please tell me. And Am I an yeah. asshole? <laughs> we would love, because this is one that maybe, like, doesn't often, like, you don't really get the chance to have that kind of discussion. And maybe the feeling is different for, ever, like, I don't know. Who knows? One time I was in there when I was dealing with my baby, and... Um, I thought you were going to say dealing with my BM, and I was like... <laughs> She's talking about everything today, aren't we? She's really open. Just get her to talk about poo, and she's an open book, people. <laughs> and, you know, it took me a long time. And then when I came out, there was somebody in a wheelchair waiting, and I felt really bad. But on the other hand, it, as you said, a lot of times it is the only place with the koala mm-hmm. changing and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But mm-hmm. it's kind of awkward. So, yeah, if you're differently able, let me know if I'm an asshole. Yeah. Thank you. And that's all for today. (laughs) Don't forget to leave us a five-star review. Do you have something you want to say? Well, no, but I feel like it's totally like on the subject. I just have to throw it in here Mm -hmm. that there's a, a, a new development out of the Mayo Clinic where they were successfully able to, uh, get a, a man who was quadriplegic after a surfing incident to walk again with stem cells from his stomach. Wait, you're just dropping that all of a sudden? I know. I just like felt like we're just talking about wheelchairs, so like I have to throw this little thing in. Are you in. serious? Yeah, I'm serious. He can walk? Yes. They were successful. There's a 10-person trial that's going on, and he was like, well, what do I have to lose? I'll sign up for it. And so this the clinic that is um, like the, the Christopher Reeves yeah. Foundation is yeah. t- conducting this study, and they have had like mixed results with the patients, but... There have been a few cases where it was very successful, and this man is one of them. And his name's Chris. I can't remember what his last name is. But um, Mohammed Baidon is the name of this surgeon, and he has successfully gotten this man to... He said it, it was really fast. Within a few hours he was, and days, he was able to feel feeling Come in his leg, legs again, and now he can walk unassisted for short periods of time, and within a week was able to tie his own shoes. Can you even imagine? His wife, like, they had discussed pulling the plug because he was quadriplegic. Oh, no, no, and his no, wife no, said, no. let's just hold on for a little bit longer and see. And then they were approached with the study, and now he's walking. And this, and he was, like, ready to pull the plug. Is that crazy or what? Pulling the plug? Like, he was he was going to die? Like, he was, qua- he was quadriplegic. Like, I think maybe his wife had talked about, like, you know, if, if this, what, like, you know, maybe... I don't know how what they were talking. Wow, they were that's kind of hinting bonkers. at that, that that they they had discussed that you know, and she was like, "No, we have to keep trying for." And then that's incredible. Can, that's isn't great. That cool? yes. Yeah, I'll definitely link that article because I have it here, and I've been like super excited to, and I like wow. forgot to share the last time because I was too busy talking about you know tomatoes, but like. <laughs> Wow, you just like yeah. at the last minute are like, oh, by the way, miracle happened. Yeah, miracle, right? So I like have to leave you guys on a high note. You know, Beautiful. We were talking about that. So there you go. There's some yeah. good news for you. Fantastic. And we'll see you guys next time. Yay. Bye.